Okay, can you all let me know when you can see my screen? I think we'll start already. Um, people will join us while we we'll go. Visible, Tom. You can see, right? Okay, great. Ah, okay. Onogu yeah, yeah um, Onogu, you can um, ask, you can speak. Someone wants to, someone is raising his hand. Yes, you can see, I can see your screen. Okay, okay, great. great. Okay, so today we'll be discussing or co-learning um, process quality control. Uh, I was deliberate when I was choosing the topic. I didn't want it to be statistical process control because that's what um, we are all used to, uh, what we, we hear and see most often. But what's, 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 um, what are we really trying to control? What are we trying to, to get in place? It's, um, it's, um, it's quality. It's meeting our, our consumer or customer needs. That's the, that's the focus. That's what we really want to achieve. So whether or not you are um, uh, making consumer goods or you are giving out services, you want them to always meet the, the consumer specification. So our control should be um, that of quality, ensuring that we meet um, um, consumers' requirements all the time. So, so that's the reason why I chose this. And we'll be looking at it from SPC and SQC um, um, point of view. Okay, so for those who don't know me, um, Dominic Wangorocha, I think I shared this in the last um, training, so I would not spend so much time here. I'm a chemical engineer, I have an MBA, and finance and investment, a lead quality auditor with ISO, um, Six Sigma certified, I've done uh, nine plus years in manufacturing. Okay, so what's, what's our objective today? We understand what um, PQC is, process quality control. We look at SPC, we're looking at um, um, SQC, we define them, understand their differences, control process inputs, and um, how process inputs are controlled. We we'll look at um, process capability with Minitab. Uh, we we'll look at monitoring process outputs, thus the dependent variables, and we'll be looking at the seven QC tools. So there will be a mix in all of this, which is very important that we know, um, because you you require um, the seven quality control tools, both for input um, controls and for output controls. Um, but we would try to be more focused so you, you understand the approach. You need both, you need the seven, seven quality control um, tools for both um, process inputs and process output, outputs. But um, because of the, um, the challenges I know most industry face, so we'll be very deliberate um, in, in the tools we'll be using for the inputs and those we'll use for outputs. Okay, so what is process quality control? Um, so what I've done is define process. It's a set of interrelated or interacting activities. So if you think of it from um, a service point of view, it's um, your consumer or your customer has asked you to design this and um, you have to come up with ways of meeting that customer needs. If manufacturing, you are told to, um, to for example, make diapers, and you have um, things to, you, you have process, you have your process in place or um, production of um, detergents, you have your process in place to meet, meet it. So there are so many activities happening. It's either you are, you, you are heating up um, the slurry and or you are drying the powder or you are packing. Or you, it's also, it, a process could also be in a bank it, the service arena. So it's either you're on the queue, you're trying to meet the, the teller, you meet the teller, you get, um, you, you fill your, your logs and you get your cash. 
but also what is quality. So it's just ensuring that the goods and services are fit for purpose. And how do you control it? Um, so what is the control part? It's um, the evaluation of the process over time, ensuring its stability. So this is this is what PQC is about. So it's basically from my my own definition. So you could see it differently somewhere else. It's a means of evaluating a process stability over a period of time, hence ensuring its output as the goods and services are fit for use. So this is how I have defined it. So SQC SPC. So SPC is um, it's a statistical process um, control. Um, it's the application of the same, that's the, there are 14 quality tools actually. It's, um, so ASQ, um, ASQ defined appropriately and added seven more, but we'll be focusing on the first seven, which we all know. So SPC controls the inputs. So it's looking at um, tools that control process inputs, depend, independent variables. So it's looking at error prevention and looking at um, monitoring process real time. So this is the difference. Um, while SQC uses the same tools, but here it's monitoring and process outputs. Um, it's looking at error detection and um, control, controlling defects from reaching the consumer. But if you think of it, which one would you rather have? You want to, you want to ensure that you prevent it rather than you wait for it to have happened before you before you you, you notice it. So, but yeah, although the boats are often interchangeably used, like I said earlier, um, SQC includes acceptance sampling while SPC does not. So the 14 of them. So, but the seven which we very much know is the control chart, Pareto, the cause and effect diagram or approach rather, um, graphs, charts, check sheets, um, histograms, scatter, dram, scatter diagrams, uh, the control chart itself. We'll be looking at all of this um, as we go along, each of them in detail, and how you could use them to control your process. Um, so these are the SUPs, that's the other ones which ASQ has um, put in place. So we're looking at progress centers, process flow charts, event logs, defect mapping, data stratification, sample size determination, randomization. So some of these things, um, so there's a plan to do um, the defined phase for C Sigma next week. So we'll be looking at some of these things in detail. Uh, uh, next week, you'd, you understand how, you understand better how they play. Okay, so why, why should we study SPC and SQC? Okay, also to note, um, if we have questions, you could um, type them into the chat. We would look at it after the, after the training, or after the course. Yes, I'm recording. Okay, so why, why SPC? So one is to understand process and specification limit, limits. It's to eliminate the assignable variations. You know, there will always be variation in systems, whether uh, we like it or not. There'll be variations. Variations will happen once in a while or not. But um, some of them are acceptable variations and some of them are assignable. So those are the ones that are abnormal. So abnormal when, when you have any of these variations. So even when you have variations that are okay, you still want to control it. You want to get the best out of it. Um, then when you have assignable variation that um, special um, sources, that's the abnormal ones, then you want to bring them into control. So also monitoring ongoing production process. That's one of the reasons why we do this. You want to reduce crap and rework. You understand this better when we go into Six Sigma next week. Um, improving productivity and overall quality. Um, competing in today's world market. So um, I love business. Okay, those who know me, they know. <laughs> okay, so it's, um, I think for me, this is the most important. It's, um, it's not, you're not just a quality personnel or understanding what SPC and SQC, if you're not going to, trend in the market if you're not going to sell your products. So it's it, um, this data analytics helps you understand what um, today's, today's market um, um, means. So it's, um, um, I, I think you would see how we'd use it for something like a consumer complaint, understand how your consumers are reacting to the challenges that they're facing. So um, the consumer is, there, there's been a lot of complaint in a particular area of your business and you're not noticing. But when you put SQC or SPC into 
into use, you'll be able to understand. So sometimes I ask myself, did um, Nokia, BlackBerry ever use any of these tools to understand that all oh, their top complaints would have been, can you just make this um, phone um, touch screen or could you put this button here and that button here? If they had seen the trend, maybe with a histogram or with a Pareto diagram, they would have seen that the largest or 80% of their, their complaints were coming from consumers um, of um, complaining, like making this, um, saying they wanted a, a touch screen and they would have been able to control it. Uh, today, I think if I was, were to complain, I would say, okay, the deli delivery time that we have for for goods and services with uh, most of the delivery bikes. It's, it's, uh, it's long wait time. You, you want something delivered in the morning and it comes in the evening. So those kind of complaints, um, one day um, drone comes, starts delivering and someone is out of business. But when you understand this complaint, it helps you better map your business. So it's more important for business growth than, um, than we could imagine, I, I put it that way. So what's, so you remember my first, um, um, definition here talks about um, process and specification there. So it, it, there's a difference between specification limits and control limits. Specification limit is what your cost customer wants. That's um, the spec your customer has given you or what you want to make for your customers. Right? Your control limit is what you set, uh, is what is set by the process. You want to meet those um, limits, your process limits, so that you don't um, exceed your specification limits. So there are two different things. What can the process do? Um, it helps you um, the, uh, meet better what the consumer wants. So there's a PDC approach for for um, for SQC and SPC. I always like to bring this in because um, this is what it's about. It's about solving problems. So you, first of all, you need to identify your problem. You make um, I um, make changes designed to correct or improve those situations. You analyze um, the effect of these changes. Like I said, um, you have you have a challenge in your business. You are seeing it with your Pareto diagram. You need to analyze it, understand which one is giving the giving me the most challenge, and you you, you put in a system. So you act. You, you act. You put in a, a system to solve it. So if you see what we discussed, SPC goes into your system, SQC comes out and it solves that challenge. Yeah, I think I just um, mute, minimize all of this. How do I? Ah, no, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so we go. I was trying to take that off. Okay, so there are seven steps to quality control problem solving, and this tells you how, when I share this slide, I think we can look into this um, better. Um, this helps you understand how to use each of these um, seven quality control tools to solving your problem. A quick one would be, if I want to solve a problem today, I will start with a Pareto diagram because I want to understand where is the light, where, 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 what, which is my biggest challenge. Is my biggest challenge the waiting times for co customers to receive their products? Um, if that's the case, then I can now go to understanding it with a cost and effect diagram, which is like Ishikawa. I can now also um, um, plot a graph showing me how many customers made orders um, this week, how many, what, at what time did they receive their orders? And um, then I plan an activity. So the graph tells me, oh, 20 customers, we had um, waiting times of over maybe 400, uh, 400 minutes and all of that. Then you better analyze your courses with your cost and effect. And you could use your um, histogram also to analyze your courses, know which one of them are causing your challenges. Then you can implement your countermeasures um, after your, your, your cause and effect diagram, do a YY to understand um, properly the root cause and put um, measures in place. You can also check your results using um, a histogram, a um, scattered um, um, diagram, and establish a control with, with any of these things. But it just tells you which of them is more effective to use when solving a problem with the seven quality control tools. Um, okay, so for us to better go into this course proper, you need to understand what the variable data is and what an attribute data, because this is what we control in systems. And variable data is um, 
uh, something you can measure like height, weight, time, then decimal places, the sample sizes are smaller. It's easier for you to react when you have this. Um, it's critical for product characteristics. That is how you define your specs. You say um, the bulk density is um, 400 to 500.6. It, it works with decimals. Um, or the weight of your of your product is 26 gram or 100 gram and, and so for attributes it, there are things that okay they can be in decimals because most times we use check sheets for things like this um, you use a standard set like a gauge or a label a label gauge so we have this um, um, this um, forms that you could use to check if your label is centered or not you cannot um, you cannot measure that in decimals. You can only say, um, I've checked this piece, this um, maybe 20, 20 bottles with this label gauge, and I'm, I'm able to see that 15 of them um, were, were misaligned and three of them were not. So these are attributes, attribute data. That's what differentiates them from a variable, a variable data. So they help you summarize characteristics better. Okay, so what do we, when we look, when we, as we go through our charts, you need to understand when we say something is out of statistical control, uh, we're saying the points are beyond the control limits, the control limits, understand, the control limits. And um, there's a, a non-random scatter within the control limits. So it's two different things. You can, you can be within your specification, but you are out of statistical control. We'll see it as we go along. Um, you could have more points, maybe on a particular area in your graph, then you are still out of statistical control. Um, then you could have six or more consecutive points slowly moving up and down your spec. We we'll would define all of this as we as we go. But it doesn't uh, it doesn't mean you're out of specification. It just means you need to control your system. <laughs> if you don't, then you go out of specification. Okay, so. Uh, I uh, before we go into control um, controlling inputs, uh, yeah. which is important, we we need to understand what process control and process capability is. I see most times people mistake it a lot. Um, so process control is evaluation of the process stability over time, the stability over time. So that's the the best to use in this situation is a control chart, so like a run chart. So while a process capability is the evaluation of how well the process meets the specification. So to manage your inputs, it's better to use any of these two graphs, but I would, um, I would take us through um, capability first because the control part we also need to see in the SQC. So you understand that controlling of process, controlling of process inputs, we are talking about um, SPC now, right? So it's SPC now, so, but um, since the control part also has SQC, we could look at that later. So process capability, capability is how well does my process meet um, the defined specifications, okay? So process capability. So if you ask me, um, this is, um, I think we see this a lot Oh, sorry. I think we see this a lot everywhere for businesses or for for those who are in process control or who are in manufacturing. We we tend to see this a lot, but I um, it would be better to understand this better. So we are looking at um machine systems, um how best do you control them? We know about CP, we know about CPK. Um, CPK, that's, which is more popular, is the process capability index. Um, so there are values that we need to use to check if um, our processes are statistically um, stable, if our, um, if our readings or our values are within specification. My advice would be this, when you want to use process capability as an input, it is good that you, you use it to monitor um, so there are many inputs to a process, so it's better to start from the very first first input. So I'll give you an example. Um, sorry, I'm using more of um, <laughs> powders production examples. So I want to get um, 
I want to get um, a dry powder um, for for my customer or for my consumer. I want to get dry powder for my customer or consumer. What makes it dry is that it has um, a lower moisture content. Um, what should I control in that process? Should I focus on the moisture? Um, should I check the capability of the moisture meter, or should I check the capability of the of the of what hits it? So I should. I, it's better you check the capability of your your furnace or your what what hits the material. So I would want to know how much heat goes into my system. So if I'm looking at, uh, I'm trying to get a moisture of maybe 2.3 or 4% 4, 4 moisture, and I understand that my furnace has to be at 450 degrees Celsius um, to 500 degrees Celsius at every point in time, it means that that's what I need to keep stable that's um, the, the furnace heater needs to be capable to deliver 400 to 500 at every point in time. Okay, I would hold it there while we'll understand as we go forward. So um, how did all of this come about? Um, it's about capability is more about looking at um, six sigma and three sigma. We know sigma is um, standard deviation. It's, that's how um, uh, the sigma was defined. Okay, next week we'll see that better. So when we add one sigma, what does it tell you? It tells you that just 68.27% of your values um, are within um, spec. Um, for three sigma, you're at 99. Um, that's plus or minus three um, sigma, you're at 99.73. So we are talking about on both sides. So if you look at my graph, you're three sigma, to the center and three sigma to the other side. So positive three sigma and negative three sigma. It gives you 99.73. Then when you get um, plus or minus six sigma, then you are at 99.99%. So that's what um, this is about. But um, let's use, so the very good example people use most of the time is when you're trying to park your car in your, in your, in your house. Um, it's, it's, um, it's a process. So you could be, so, it, it's people, uh, so I was even discussing this yesterday. We focus so much on CPK, not knowing that the most important, uh, so not knowing that the most important, um, where we should focus the most is um, CP for a process that you know is not stable. So you've done your run chart, you've seen that your process is, is very funny that so your focus should be getting your CP in place. So if you look at this very well, um, CP is the process is, is the process capable to produce inside the limit. That's the first thing you need to check. Is my process capable to produce inside the limit? So I need to get my CP correct before thinking of my CPK. So it's the biggest miss most times. Everybody is so focused on CPK when CPK is not your problem. Get your process um, capable first, put your process within the limit. Is the car fitting to the width of the road? If you see the picture we have here. Oh, really? Can you still hear me? Ah, okay. Hi everyone, can you still hear me? I think I went off for some time. Yes, yes, sir. I can hear you. Okay, so at what point did you stop hearing me? Because I need to. Maybe we're talking about um, packing the cars and the most important okay. one, uh, we focus more on uh, CPK than CP. Okay, so I'll continue then. Okay, so when this goes off, um, I think we have a very short time remaining. But well, if it goes off at any time, I think we can join again with the, new, with the same password. Or I could just share it in the... Right? I can share it in the chat or something.
Okay, so let's continue then. Okay, so, so uh, like I was saying, it's more important for you to be able to put your, your car to ensure to be sure that your car width is fitting the road width than focusing on whether your car is um, centered. And so, so is CPK talks more about is the process centered? Is the car driving in the middle of the road? Is it the center to the left or the right? So you can imagine it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that is my process capable to produce inside that limit, first of all. Okay. Um, okay, so let's go. So um, looking at CPK, like I so for CPK, negative no, number tells you that your process will regular your the car will crash into the wall. Um, for 0 0.5, it's a good chance of hitting the wall. For one, your car may just be touching the nearest edge while entering your car park. Uh, for two, it is great. You have good clearance. For three, it is excellent and you have a very good clearance. So, but if you also look at CPK, you could also have a, a CPU, which is the upper value of a CPK and a CPL, which is the lower value. It just tells you that your process is tilted more to the upper spec or tilted more to the lower spec. Um, so this is all, I think, the same narration. I would not spend so much time here, but the only thing we need to understand here from this table is our CP and um, DPMO. When we do Six Sigma, I would, I would spend more time on Z value, so maybe for now. It's just use, it's a value using calculating your CPK. So when your CP um, is, you can see is one, uh, 1.33, yeah, when they say your process is capable um, at 1.33, your Z value is four, and your defect per million units is, um, is 63. You, you understand, in one million, um, products that you produce, you just have 63. When you improve it to 1.6, then you are getting 1.6 of the same in 1 million, which makes it um, better and lower for you. Okay, so I, I think it's time for us to, so if you have Minitab, it would be great for you to just open it now before we get there. Yep. So just some other um, thoughts about CP and CPK. CPK, CP equals to CPK, then the process is perfectly centered. But um, CPK accounts for centering. So it means your CPK can never be larger than your CP. So you understand the point. So the more you are trying to center, the more you are, um, your CP gets better. So um, the both of them definitely assume a, a more stable process. So generally, what keeps your process satisfied is that, and what keeps you satisfied as um, as a business owner is that your CPK is at um, 1.33. So that's when they tell you it's good, it's four sigma. Okay, so CP values, um, I'll focus on the other part, re relating it. It's um, if the ratio is greater than one, then engineering tolerance is greater, the process spread, than greater than the process spread, so the process has this potential of being capable. So it, it's it's more of that. Okay, so um, okay, yeah. So let's open a mini tab now, if you can. And I would want to show. So I would have to. Any more? Oops. I think my network is very terrible. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay, I think I have a terrible network today. <laughs> Some people are trying to call me and that's it's affecting my network. Okay, so let's open Minitab. If you have your Minitab opened, I think it's the best time to do, to open it. I would also share with you a file that I um, that I prepared, so you can also use this file. I hope it's it's, it's able to share.
Well, you can still hear me and see my screen, right? Okay, great. Okay, let me know when you have opened Minitab so we can start. Okay, so I have, um, good, I have two people who have opened, great. So I have um, Minitab opened because I have it already. So if you don't have, just follow the process. 